So our sixth session for today, Sales Motivation and Leadership by Mr. Anil Keshri Shah. Mr. Anil Keshri Shah is a well-known banker or should I say a former banker now because having dedicated over 32 years of his life in the banking industry, he definitely made a name for himself and an immeasurable impact on the industry. And being a banker almost all his life, now he's moved on to become an entrepreneur. And Mr. Shah is the chairperson of <laughs> Lead Nepal Inc., an institution dedicated to crafting better leaders in a cross-section of sectors in the nation. I'm sure you all know he's also a fantastic public speaker. So, can we just give him a big, big round of applause? Thank you very much, Mr. Shah, being a part of Sales Summit 2022. Thank you very much, Adiksha. Your presence has distracted me, but I'll try to get focus back here again. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Wow, it's, it's really amazing to see this hall filled with so many people, with so much energy, just listening to a few of the presentations with so many new thoughts. Nepal hami krishi pradhan desh banchon, kisan ko desh banchon. We are an agricultural based country, a country of farmers. Have you ever thought what is it that the farmer needs to be successful every year, every season, every crop? The farmer, we say, needs good soil, because without good soil, what can you do? Give him good soil. The farmer needs good seeds, because without good seeds, how can you have a good crop? Give him good seeds. We say the farmer also needs fertilizer. Fine. Very difficult in Nepal, but let's get him some fertilizer. Get her some fertilizer as well. So the farmer has good soil, good seed, good fertilizer. But now the farmer needs all of you. Because in your companies, you are what that farmer needs the most every crop every year. Because now the farmer needs rain. The farmer needs water. Without that rain, without that water, no matter how good the soil is, how good the seed is, and how much fertilizer they, uh, he has, there will be no crop. And you, the salespeople, in any organization, any institution, are the rain makers. You are the ones who bring the rain, and with that rain comes the crop. Get up and give yourselves a hand. Come on, get up and give yourselves a hand. You deserve it. You deserve it. Because you are the ones who bring that rain. Without that rain, nothing's going to happen. No matter how good the company is, how good the brand is, no sales, no money, no revenue, no salary, no nothing. You, ladies and gentlemen, are the rain makers of your institutions. You, the sales force, you, the dedicated ones who go out there and do what seems to be impossible, are the ones who make it all possible. I hear a lot about transformation, digital transformation. digital transformation motor helicopter the power of any family was shown by one thing when I was a child. You know what that was? It required a wire. The telephone. You had to know a minister, at least a sachib, if not the prime minister, to get a telephone. And when the telephone came to your house, it was as big as your child getting married. The whole neighborhood used to come and look at the telephone. Wow, you got a phone. You must know, you must be very powerful. You must know some powerful people. I was the line for three years, I was the phone for four years, I was the phone for four years. And that phone was there, the wire was pulled, the phone was put in prime place, you know, next to Ganesh ji and all the Bhagwans was the phone. And Tring, tring, it would ring, and we, hello, hello, and whether you needed to, you dial the phone, hello, phone ma kura garya, uta pa ni phone ma ita gari raya chan, hello, hello. Tar tiyo phone ghar ma aisa ke pichhi jati ramailo hun thiyo, jati shan dekhain thiyo, 
तर काम में जाना खेल स्कूल में जाना खेल कलेज में जाना खेल फोन खल्ती में हाल दिन थी फोन गणेशजी संग बू फर्क आए पी थे फोन तैं थे जिंदगी तो चलेक जस्तु लगे आई डिन फील अर्ध नंगा हाफ नेकेड विदउट द फोन यू नो इन माई बैक पैक वेन आई वेन टू स्कूल और कलेज और नाइ दिन माई पेरेंट्स वेन दे वेन टू वर्क द फोन स्टेड एट होम and then i heard hey there is a phone oh no before i heard my favorite movie in the world you know which movie it is till now the favorite 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 anil shah movie james bond 007 and james bond i've watched every james bond that there is and once james bond came with a phone in a car hello hello while he was oh my god isko pani kaili huncha hola ra motor ma phone and the next din 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 he came talk he used to do and hello and he used to see miss money penny on the other side see her and my mother said my god isko phone to kaili na aos i said why bathroom ma hunda heri phone tipyo bhani ke huncha and i thought only in james bond but then i heard मोबाइल फोन आक मोबाइल फोन यू कैन पुट द फोन इन योर पॉकेट एंड गो एनीवेयर इन दिल्ली माय फादर सेड मोबाइल हैज कम टू दिल्ली ही वाज पोस्टेड इन दिल्ली एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम एंड आई एम गोइंग टू गेट अ मोबाइल फोन आई हैड स्टार्टेड वर्किंग इन ग्रीनलेस बैंक एंड आई कन्विंस माय सेल्फ एंड माय एल्डर ब्रदर माय मेंटर मिस्टर अनूप राणा हु स्टार्टेड नेकॉन एयर अमंगस्ट ऑल डिफरेंट थिंग्स that we needed to have these mobile phones which we didn't have throughout our lives but we had to have them now so the two of us through whatever sources managed to get a chinese brick phone i don't know how many of you saw that this phone was about this big with an antenna and the and other antenna had to be on our house and in in our case in hot cup of hotel yellow pagoda and you could then go i don't know 40 miles around and hello hello on the phone wow this was great Now we had a phone like that. The first mobile I saw was a Siemens mobile that my father had in Delhi. It was this small. It just had multiple keys and you could make a call from wherever. I think I carried that phone around more in Delhi than he did, showing off to everyone. Ah, look at this guy. Hello, hello. Suddenly the phone, which was something that was next to Ganesh ji with a wire tying it down, was something in my hand. And that seems to be like now this is the best thing ever. And then as things got transformed the communicator came with nokia where i could write keep messages do emails and then slowly slowly a chap in america a for apple when in it just ekdam transform kar dene if you ask the children now in schools a for apple they're not thinking of the apple you're thinking of they're thinking of the apple phone he brought the smartphone and now that smartphone is now an appendage it's right here i cannot leave home without it i may at times leave home without my shoes or the jacket but never without the phone and when that iphone came do you think the camera industry shuddered and said oh my god the smartphone has come our industry will collapse no but how many of you carry any sort of camera when you go anywhere I used to have cameras and lenses that you know anybody who knows me and my passion for photography knows what cameras and lenses Anil Shah had. I don't even know where they are in big bags somewhere. Who did, did you think the diary manufacturers thought that our industry is now going to pack up the Philo fax and all those things that was there because something called the smartphone has come? How many industries, the monopoly, the gaming, in the the board games and all that, did they think the crossword puzzle industry that everything is now going to shut down because of this one little thing that's in people's hands? I play my games on this. I take my photos on this. My entire calendar is on this. I I, I do everything on it, and also I make the odd phone call on it also. That, my brothers and sisters, is transformation. transformation happens somewhere and you don't know what the impact of that transformation is going to be somewhere else but transformation happens whether you know it whether you realize it whether you don't realize it transformation happens the faster you realize it in whichever industry you are the more ahead in the curve that you're going to be and the more apt you're going to be able to 
sort of craft your products and services to be able to take advantage of that transformation. If Philo Facts, the company whose diary I used to use before the smartphone, had transformed itself to make a Philo Facts app, because I was so used to the Philo Facts, I would have immediately taken the app. And today they would be most probably one of the biggest apps that was being used because Filofax was used by everybody. But they thought, who is going to write on a phone? We, they had Filofaxes from this size to this size. I had a cal desk size Filofax. I don't know how many of you have known the company. It was a, you could do everything on the Filofax that you can do on this phone now. So when you are part of the sales team, when you're part of the rainmakers, when there was no climate change, which we, the Trump followers, believe is all of us anyway, there's no climate change, there's no global warming or anything, but those of you who said there is climate change, the farmer was happy. There used to be rain, the rain used to bring enough, and in abundance, his crops used to come two to three times a year, he was very happy with that. But now, for some reason, there is no rain, and when there's rain, there's too much rain, or there is, you know, one whole year with no rain at all. So you as the salespeople, the rain makers, have to say, oh, there is no rain. Now let us look under the water, under the ground for water. You cannot just say, there is no rain, there's nothing we can do, let's all move on or die. That's not the ro role of the ra ra rainmakers. The rainmaker must transform themselves first. So when you look for digital transformation, when you talk about digital transformation, start with yourself. Start to see how you need to transform if you haven't already transformed. And guess what, this transformation is not is that my time up? What is happening? That this transformation is not a destination. This transformation is a journey. This transformation will continue throughout. It is not somewhere you reach and say, I am transformed. That is it. I don't need to do anything else. No. Because tomorrow something else will happen. You need to transform again. It's like that amazing thing. Balla tolla the question. Answer the question. Every time you think you know the answer, they change the question. But this transformation is critical for your survival, your career, your growth, and your company. Because as I said, if the rainmaker does not say that, oh, rain is not coming from the sky, let's go underground and bring the water that we require, there will be no crop, there will be famine, and that is the end of that. The competent rainmakers that you are, I'm sure you will not let that happen. And you will look for how you can transform. Remember, every time you think, what is transformation, transformation, keho, just think of that phone, where it was, and where it is today in your life. In your lifetime, you have seen that transformation. So just imagine going forward, what sort of transformations there will be. When my mother saw James Bond look at somebody and talk on the phone, she laughed and said, thank God this will never happen. Today it happens. My daughter studies in New York. I talk to her once or twice a day. Look at her not just talk to her, look at her. When I studied in America, I had to write a letter in an aerogram, which used to arrive in three weeks' time. Usually when I came for my summer holidays, my letters from the beginning of the semester were just arriving. <laughs> Today I know exactly what my daughter eats, what she's wearing, what classes she's taking, what those classrooms look like. That is transformation. Positive for my sense, but not, maybe not so positive for my daughter's sense. But still, it is transformation. And guess what? Today, I see in movies someone standing here. In fact, a long time ago, in another TV series called Star Trek. It used to be a, the one thing that the yantra that hasn't been thing, where they used to all stand in these things. Beam me up, Scotty. And, and used to be dematerialized. And if you transfer it somewhere else, and uh, he used to appear from Nepal to America or from the moon to Mars or whatever it was. Don't think that that too will not happen. Because the way we are moving forward, it will happen. And the amazing country we are in, I heard about the Chappal Launi Manchalai digital marketing kasari garni. Ti hamle gar nahi par dain. Kirman ti Chappal Launi Manche ko chora, chori, shriman, shrimati, daju, bhai, didi, baini, koi na koi bidesh ma cha. Ra u bidesh ma bha ko bhai ra, we are not only the one of the countries with the highest phone concentration, we are one of the countries with the highest smartphone concentration. The smartphone is needed to talk to, just like me with my daughter, them with their children, their son, their daughter, their brother, their sister, whoever it is. So even the 80-year-old has the smartphone 
to talk to her son or her grandson in Doha or Malaysia or Qatar or wherever they are. And the yantra is already there. Now the question is, how do you make this something more than the in which they make TikTok videos and uh, you know talk to their family? How do you put the bank in there? How do you put your product in there? How do you put your service in there? I still remember when Dabur Nepal came, and for some reasons I'm s linked up with Dabur Nepal. So the chairman of Dabur Nepal at that point, uh, Dabur India at that point of time, the person was setting up Dabur Nepal, and myself was standing on the roadside in Birganj, looking at a plot of land. And the gentleman who was the chairman of Dabur India, there was a factory there, a leather factory, and then there was empty plot, an empty plot way back. And he said, sab kharid lo. And he said, what? They said, yes, buy it all. And we said, no, no, we're setting up one hajmola plant. Although hajmola sounds very high tech, it's a very simple plant <laughs> to make hajmola. And we don't need all this land. And he smiled and he said, you will regret it. You will not only need all this land, but the land across that river also will not be enough for this factory. And we, he smiled bought a little piece of land and started Dabur. Today I go and stand in the same place. Dabur has bought all the land that the gentleman said, build a bridge and bolt across the river also. And still there's not enough land, right? That is visionary. That is the, the, the ability to, to see that transformation that is going to happen. That is the ability to see that you can go to Kerala or Kanyakumari, or you can even go to Dubai now and, and um, uh, Kuala Lumpur, open a mini bar there will be a juice that will say real juice, and you can pick it up with pride as a Nepali and see, produced in Birganj, Nepal. That is transformation to, to see that that is happening. Another company came, a cellular phone company called Encel, and I was the banker at that point of time, and they brought some projections. Cell phones had just launched in Nepal. We had to stand in line to get a SIM card. I don't know how many of you remember that, NTC SIM card, people were standing in line for eight, nine hours to get a SIM card. And the SIM card was like, my God, it's so precious, you know, a SIM card. The same one you get a pan for sale right now, but at that point of time, it was like gold. And Encel came with a projection, and then we looked at the numbers and we laughed. <laughs> what? Too many zeros, we said. So what do you mean? You have got as many SIM cards as 80% of the population of Nepal over here. <laughs> how is that going to happen? We have right now, how many are there? Yeah, we have 23,000 cell phones in Nepal now. And you are saying, how many crore? And they looked at us and said, we've done this before. We know what we're talking about. Every Nepali is going to have not one, but two SIM cards. And we laughed. And I laughed and said, they're out of their head. This is never going to happen, not in Nepal. You have to stand eight hours to get a SIM card, sir. You will get a SIM card in a pan puzzle, he said. I still remember. And look at the transformation today in technology and communication. Everybody has a SIM card, if not two SIM cards. There are more SIM cards and phones in Nepal than toilets. That should tell us something. So don't, when you think of transformation, sometimes I find, I mean, say, ko matre bichar garsho ki, o is to transformation, tiyo desma bhaiyo, tis to transformation, tiyo desma bhaiyo, yur bhaiyo, tiyo bhaiyo baneva. But no, transformation has happened right here, right at home. And guess what? Whether it be the case of Dabur or whether it be the case of Encel or any of the Unilever products or, you know, any, any of the major products and services that you see in Nepal, how did that transformation happen? We say, oh, it was the technology. Blah, 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 blah. No. It was people like you in the sales forces like yours who had the ability to see forward, to see what no, the normal people like me couldn't see, and then make that vision a reality for all of us. That is what you need to do now. Not just sell the way that it has been sold, whatever goods and services you have for the past 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You have to be able to look 10 years into the future and see, okay, this is what is going to happen. Let me start building the base so that these people who don't quite understand it right now, let me tell them why it is that they have to have a phone in their pocket all the time. I still remember a lot of people
people who I talk to say, your cell phone is useless. It's a gadget. Why would you need a phone? And why would you want a phone with you all the time? It's not just an office from a phone. How many of us knew the emails that we do, the web browsing that we do, the research that we do, everything does is done on the phone. I've even migrated from my iPad and my Surface Pro now. Even those I hardly ever touch because of the phone. I'm waiting for Apple to come up with the two screen phone, then I will never need a computer. It'll be big enough for me to do everything on it. So whatever your product or service is, just remember, if you want it to be where the potential that it has, the first people that have to see it is you. It is not the farmer who sees that deep tube well, but the pani niskin sa, when there is no rain from the sky. It is you, the rainmaker, who must see that, okay, no water coming from sky, let us look underground. Initially, people will laugh. Bye, bye, pani akas bata unsa, jimi muni bata hoyna, honna lako. But you know that now the water must come from under the ground. And when the water comes from under the ground, they will laugh, they will dance, they will be happy, they will put tikka on you and say, wonderful, such a wonderful thing it is. Just like we do for Encel, which makes Arabs of rupee. Just like we do for Dabur, who whenever we drink the juice or eat the Haj Mola. We are a country now where Dabur is in inculcated in such a way that when there is no change, they give us a hajmola instead. How wonderful for Dabur, no? I'm sure Dabur is not handing it out for free to give for change. But to do all of these things, I believe the first thing you need to do is look inside you. Look inside you to be the best that you can be. When we fly in an aircraft, the air hostess says, in the unlikely event that this aircraft is depressurized, in the unlikely event that this aircraft is depressurized, an oxygen mask will fall. If you are flying with old people or young children who need help, first, put the oxygen mask on yourself before you try to help the old people and young children. Not that you have to help you, you have to help you. Life is exactly the same. Before you try to help your institution, your society, your country, the first person you have to help is yourself. The fact that all of you are here, you have invested one day in this sales seminar is helping yourself. It is helping yourself to craft yourself to be better at what you are doing than you were yesterday when you go back to your job tomorrow. That is what you need to do. The first thing you need to do is help yourself. Help yourself be the best that you can be. A lot of people hear me talk and say, we want to be like Anil Shah. Stop. You don't want to be like me. You don't want to be like your father or mother or your boss or your teachers or your gurus. You need to be the best version of you. The best version of you. When I got married to my wife, we decided not to have a child for some time. Okay, We decided not to have a child for some time, for a few years, to enjoy being married. So Dasai is coming, that time also Dasai came, first time after marriage we went to someone who is my grandfather's age, not my grandfather, but my grandfather's age, my husband was born in the house. And he said, I don't want to give a gift, I don't want to give a gift. Oh, la la, buddy, I don't want to give a gift, la la, I don't want to give a gift. And Asidwar, and what is the Asidwar? Dada, Kana, Dako, Santana. Dada, Kana, Dako. Hajar, Dako. Next year we came, again. Third year, no santan. Bit doubt on the Asidbad's power. Fourth year, no santan again. No santan. He is the forget this. This guy is useless. No. After the fifth year, we thought, okay, I think we, we should. We need to have a kid. And I always wanted, and my wife also also always wanted one child, and I always wanted a daughter. God is great. We were blessed with a healthy baby girl. I was so happy, so happy. Baby girl was too small to take for Dasain, but off we went. Me, my mom, dad, wife, and myself for Dasain. And I told my father, Buralai Bansi, was a dana, kana, dana, santan, santan. So happy. Father smiled. 
So he came again, no hope. Hajur, Santan, why is Santan? Oh, the police, Santan, why is Santan? Dang, the power is back. And then he looks me in the eye and I'm smiling and just beaming me. Taps me on my shoulder and he says, Terota, Chora Bhayolani. Terota, Chora Bhayolani. I'm so happy, delighted. The minute he hears that, his face drops. He looks at his wife, nods his head. And I look at him and I see the disappointment in his face. And sweat starts to come on my forehead. My ears start to go red as my anger rises. My father looks down and says, Abo Anil, you buro ko bangara dharni bhaiyo. He also looks at me and he realizes that I'm getting angry with his response. And he taps me on my shoulder. And he says, Kei chaina, kei chaina. Tero chori ta chora jastai hola ni. Tero chori ta chora jastai hola ni. So that's when the Anil Shah mind takes over. I smile at him, fold my hands, look him in the eye and say, Hajur, yuta kura binti takrao. Risani ma fajur ki uta kura binti takrao. And he looks at me and says, Bhan. I look him in the eye and say, Malai meru Nepal, Singapore, ra Switzerland, jasto hai na, jati sakyo ramru Nepal chai ye ko chao. Ra meru chori, chora jasto hai na, jati sakyo ramru chori chai ye ko chao. And that, that, my brothers and sisters, is what you should aim for. Don't aim to be somebody else. Don't aim to make your company like somebody else's. Don't make to make a, our nation like some other nation. Look inside you for your own core competencies, your own core strength, and then move forward striving each day, each moment to be the best version of you. And when you move forward to do that, nothing is going to be able to stop you. But if you try to be somebody else, Nepal, like Singapore, or Switzerland, Manonsu, Banera, Kati, Nepal, Banera. Tar lakshya nahi galat thiyo. Nepal, not a Singapore, Banera saksha, not a Switzerland, Banera saksha. Tar Nepal, Nepal, Banera, 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 Kati, Ram, Brav, Nepal, Banera saksha. Tiyo desh ko manchali pani, wah, wah, Banera, Nepal, Banera saksha. So, yahar lai pani, yahar ko sangstha, Dabar jashto banao, Encel jashto banao, Unilever jashto banao, Kye jashto banao, Banera, 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 lakshya nahi galat bhaiyo thiyo. लक्ष्य उन पर से हमरो कंपनी लाए हमरो कंपनी लाए सब बंदा रामरो हमरो कंपनी का सरी बनाऊंगी हमरो सेवा या हमरो बस्तु लाए हमरो सेवा रा हमरो बस्तु सब बंदा रामरो का सरी बनाऊंगी और उनको जस्तो है ना और उनको बंदा रामरो है ना हमरो लाए सब बंदा रामरो का सरी बनाऊंगी How do we make it the best How do we make each of our products and services the best that it can be I still remember World Cup 2022 is coming in Doha In another era in another age when we used to be a kingdom and there used to be a crown prince before he killed everybody. I happened to be in Qatar with that crown prince, meeting the crown prince of Qatar. They went to school somewhere in London together at some point of time. And they were already facing a lot of pro pressure from the international community for using Nepali labor at very low prices uh, to build those stadiums and all. So he gave an idea. Just look at this idea. This was a long time ago, you know, before the royal massacre, before this whole whatever transformation we went into. So he said to us, we are bring, bringing the World Cup here. We will for sure bring the World Cup, many other international sporting events, so on and so forth. Nepali people are helping us build the stadiums, the hotels, the highways, and everything that is required to build, bring this World Cup to Qatar. I have an idea, Your Royal Highness. Why don't we work together for something? Let Qatar give Nepal a gift that will keep giving forever. We were excited. We said, yes, yes. What gift will you give us? How much money? How many dollars? Are we talking billion dollars? We didn't say that to him. But that's what we all thought. But this Qatari crown prince said something completely different. He said, have you heard of Avia? Have you heard of Perrier? These are the waters that go around the world. And everybody drinks them. We said, yes. One of the things that they say about the Qatar World Cup is it's going to be too hot, too hot, too hot. They are afraid of our sun, of our sand. When people are hot, what do they drink? They drink a lot of water. If we start now, I am sure we can develop our water from the Sagarmatha, from the Mount Everest, from the Himalaya. 
that will be world class. We will launch this water in 2022 in Qatar. It will be the only water that will be available in Qatar for the World Cup. The world will drink your water. And after Qatar, the water will go to the world. Wow. Got you okay? Idea cost with you. Tartu Velama to Kotama Kitian. To Kotama Wununtu Mate, Sabajan Amitu, Armiko uniform Laman chair with you. But in that room, we lack you. We lack the rainmakers. We lack the people to pick up that idea and say, we will take this and run. We will make that water. We will bring it to Qatar. We will take it to the world. I remembered this only about 18 months later after returning from Qatar. And I don't think anyone else in that room remembered it either. But that crown prince was very, very serious. Very, very serious about that water from Nepal. And if we had started working on it now, how exciting times it would be now when plain loads of that water would be heading to Qatar right now to wait for the World Cup to start. And just imagine when that Himalayan water would be everywhere in the World Cup and then in Paris and New York and Tokyo and Frankfurt, in Seoul, in Sydney, there would be this demand for that Himalayan water, that water of the World Cup. But that is where we lacked you. And that is why I feel we should never miss opportunities like this. And that is why it is critical that those of you who are here, the rainmakers of our country, not only of your institutions, must take every opportunity and make the most of it. Don't now think back and say, eh, Forget that. Spilled milk is spilled milk. But think of all the opportunities that await you now. The things that can be done now to go forward. The world is going natural. Two Nepalese young men who also, like me, like to eat chicken, were sitting in America in a barbecue drinking beer. And their host had a bunch of dogs. And he gave a churpi. And the dog loved the churpi. And now we can't get any churpi in Nepal. Because they buy all the churpi and sell it to the dogs in America as Himalayan dog chew. Google it. Himalayan dog chew, you'll be shocked. The price of the churpi that the dogs are eating in uh, America. Why? Because all the vets said this is the most beautiful thing for the dogs. Because the plastic they were chewing on the dog thing was giving them cancer. This is completely natural. It's made of yak milk. Do you know yak? Yak? How many of you have had yak cheese? I've never had yak cheese. Yak is the bull. It's not the cow. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> what salespeople are you? <laughs> yeah, never had yak cheese. I'm glad you all have had yak cheese. Enjoyed it, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Never had. I've had the milk from the, uh, the, the female and the cheese from there, but haven't had the pleasure of having the yak cheese yet. <laughs> Please enjoy. But he took all this, should be, marketed it, branded it. Please Google Himalayan dog chew. You'll be amazed. It's all over America, most probably in Europe also now. Every dog is chewing this, and we get no good quality should be here. He buys every should be that there is. Should be one guy. Okay. Lopsy. Have you seen Lopsy? I've not seen Lopsy anywhere else. They say somewhere in South America there's Lopsy. But we have this thing called Lopsy. The whole world wants to go natural. The children want to eat more sweets, more sweets. They're looking for natural things. Lopsy is, is phenomenal. The qualities of Lopsy for, for your health, for everything, is, is phenomenal. But it's made in those um, unhygienic nanglos in limited quantities, so on and so forth. But if it is done in an amazing way with rainmakers like you, selling it on a global scale, Lopsy will take over the world. Yes, Switzerland, Switzerland, money. When I say Switzerland, but I say to do to cheese or chocolate, so only. Guess who taught, taught us to make yak cheese? It was the Swiss. They came when the king was there and said, "What can we do for you, Your Majesty?" He could have said, "Bring banking." He didn't. He said, "Teach us to make cheese." So they taught us to make cheese. That's why we make so much wonderful cheese in Nepal now. I wish they said make chocolate also. We would have made some good chocolate. But no one's going to tell us how to make lopsy mate and lopsy candy and lopsy whatever it is. But we all love lopsy. 
don't we? I love lapsi. I had lapsi ko achar, lapsi meat, lapsi what, what lapsi this, lapsi that. But why is it that even in Bihar and Uttarakhand and you know Himachal, we haven't been able to take lapsi even there? And why is it we haven't been able to take lapsi to the world? It's yet again, because my generation didn't have the rainmakers like you. The people who had the vision to look outside your town, your village, your city, your country, and digitization transformation is global now. But how do we sell our lapsi in uh, New York? You use the font. You don't have to have your stores in New York anymore. As long as you have your brand there, someone orders it, it goes out of Kathmandu and is in New York, in Tokyo, wherever it is. The market is global. Again, in that one of those Middle Eastern trips, we used to go to a lot to the Middle East. We went to Kuwait. And the Kuwaiti Emir, whatever it was, I was there on the day when Kuwait legalized women voting, by the way. It was that, that time. So again, they were there, and Kuwait had just been totally taken over by Iraq. The Americans had thrown the Iraqis out. Kuwait, Kuwaitis had come back. And we again said, Rada, we were obviously there to party, and the Kuwaitis wanted to do business. We didn't know why. So the Kuwaiti crown prince asked, what can we do for you and the people of Nepal? And the CP looked at me and said, ke bande una anil. So I got up again, and I said, uh, your royal highness, your beautiful nation has been ravaged by the Iraqis. There is holes in every building. Please bring Nepali labor here and help us rebuild this beautiful country. We will rebuild it more beautiful than it was before. We work very hard. We're very honest people. He smiled. He nodded at somebody who was, I think, his British personal assistant. And then he said, Anil, can I ask you something? You're a banker. I said, yes. You make investments, you give loans? Yes. To new projects? Yes. Suppose you give loan to a new project like Dabur, when there's nothing but land, they come to you and say, we want to buy this land. You take the risk and say, okay, you give them loan. Dabur buys the land. They, he didn't say Dabur, he said the company buys the land. They build a factory, you give more money, they buy machinery, they build more money and start to make the product. And they start to sell the product and they start to be successful and get cash. At that point, will you as a banker say to them, now you go to another bank? No. You will grab them and keep them and make sure they go nowhere else. I said, yes, because now the risk is much less and they're starting to make profit and they're starting to repay the loan. Why would we let them go to another bank? He said, exactly, Anil. So when a child is born in your country, anywhere in the village and in the cities, they're very small. They do nothing. They cry. They eat. They cry. They eat. Then you put them to school. You have to pay more money. They go to school. They ask for more money for this, for more money for that, more money. Then they become 18 years old. When they're ready to work, when they're ready to give back, and then what do you come and tell me? Take my 18-year-old and make your country. Who is going to make your country, Mr. Shah, if I take all your 18-year-olds to make my country? And that's when I thought, I'm very smart. I said, yes, Your Royal Highness, very true. But there are no opportunities in Nepal. There is nowhere they can get employed, so they have to go and come to Kuwait, to Qatar, to Saudi. And he smiled and he said, Anil, do you know how many flights come from Kathmandu to the Middle East? Every day. I didn't. He did. At that point of time, 14 flights. Every day used to come from Kathmandu to different cities in the Middle East. He said, one thing in common in, in the Middle East. We want the best. We have money. We will pay. We want the best. This morning for breakfast, I had something from Brazil, something from Australia, something from Switzerland, something from Belgium, something from France. But I had nothing from Nepal. I hear you have amazing oranges. I hear you have amazing apples. I hear you have amazing chilled water from the Himalaya, so, um, snows. I said, yes, we do. He said, Anil, I told you about those 14 flights. Do you know every plane has two sections on the top? sits all the people. On the bottom sits all the cargo. I said, yes. He said, don't take offense. But when the Nepali person comes to Kuwait or to Saudi or to Qatar, they come with the clothes on their back and one cap. They have no luggage. When they go back, they have TV, two suitcase, this, that. When they come, they have nothing. The bottom of the plane always comes empty. Why don't you fill the bottom of the plane with your spinach, your apples, your oranges, your fish. 
so that I can in the morning say, this was in the Himalaya two days ago, and I'm eating it now in Kuwait. Look at that. Yet again, no rainmakers. Yet again, opportunities lost. Yet again, even today, empty planes flying into the Middle East. Not 14, I don't know how many fly in now. Many, many more. So that is why each and every one of you needs to look inside you and get your core competencies. I want to share with you in the end what I feel a great leader should have. And each and every one of you needs to be a great leader. Because institutions no longer need followers. We need leaders. And each and every one of you must be the best leader that you can be. Not a leader like me or somebody else, but the best leader. So the first attribute of being a great leader is to lead from the front. Those days are gone when you scream and shout from the back and hope that people do whatever they need to do in the front. Today, a leader must lead from the front. If you are in sales, if you are managing a team, if you are in the team, doesn't matter. You lead from the front. You do not stand in your seat. You do not bark out instructions and whatever it is. You lead from the front. I still remember when I was Nabil CEO the first time round, not this time round, first time round, our branch in Kantipath got robbed. Someone walked in with a gun, put it on the branch manager's head, and I had a protocol. If someone walks in with gun, do whatever they say, to the guards also and to the staff also. So they remembered the protocol, took out the money, gave it to him, walked him to the door so that he wouldn't shoot anyone on the way out. And the person left, branch manager came in, rung the alarm. The police came, asked what happened, this, this, this. Why did you give him the money? Why didn't the guards do anything? CEO had said something, called the CEO, so I was there. And then the army was called, because at that time we were in the middle of the revolution. And the army said, Anilji, we are sure you have given this money to the Maoists. Otherwise, why would you do this? You have guards, you have this, that, and the branch manager just gave, and they say that you, you have given this instruction? I said, yes, because money will come back, but life will not. And there was a huge discussion, so on and so forth, and the army was about to put Anil Shah in the van to take him to some nice room to have a good question and answer session. But fortunately, the walkie-talkie came that someone in Burani Kanta thinks that someone suspicious has come into their house, rented room, and maybe it is the person who robbed the bank, because all the FMs were saying this whole thing about the bank. The press was there saying, Anilji, what sort of protocol is this? Your, your, my deposit, your deposit, money is not safe. Anyone can walk in with a gun and take your money out and so on and so forth. And what sort of leadership is this and all. At that point of time, Anil Shah did not ask the press protocol officer or anything. Stood in front, answered all the questions, answered the police, answered the army, got into the van and went to Buranil Kanta. And as they kicked in the door, there was all the money except, I think, 80,000 rupees. And more thing, there was the gun. And thank God Anil Shah was not an expatriate CEO. He was Nepali and understands the local language. As the police officer said, Sir, you have AIG ko gun bai, ke DIG ko bandhu honi. I said, huh? Sos ko bandhu gre? Ye Baburam ji, Prasanda ji ko hai na? It was one police officer's gun. The son had taken the gun in the morning because the police officer had not given him money to go on a school trip to Mumbai. He decided to rob a bank and take the money. Why 80,000? That's what he needed to give to go to the school trip. <laughs> he couldn't ask for just 80,000. He said, Paisa de. So they gave him a lot more money. He dumped all the other money, took 80,000. Where was he? Gone to school to pay the fees to go to Bombay or wherever he was going. But having stood in front and led from the front, the whole team's respect for me became exponential. Because here was not someone who would hide in his office and send someone else when the heat was up, but here was someone they felt is a shield. He will stand in front of us in times of need. And that's what you need to do. In good times, everybody wants to be a leader. Everybody wants to grab the mic and, yeah, yeah, put the light on me. Yeah, here's the award we won. But it's in the bad times that you need to be standing in the front and leading from the front. This is the first attribute to being an exceptional leader. The second, I believe I'm a religious person. I believe in astrology and stuff like that. To be a great leader also, you don't need to go to astrologists, but you need to be able to see a little bit into the future of what your industry is going to be. Just like the person who stood with us on that highway in Birganj when he said, buy all the land. He had already seen what Dabur was going to be in Nepal and how much it, that Dabur was going to require. That NCEL person has already seen population of this much, everyone's going to carry a cell phone, huge market. 
as a good leader, you have to be able to see into the future. You must be able to look into the future to say, everybody sees the phone as being something tied to the to wire. I see the phone as being something in which you can look at your face and which will take photos and wipe out the camera industry. Steve Jobs saw that. At one point of time,